and I'm not going to take the very beginner. If you cannot play an A, D, and an E, um, then this is probably not the lesson for you. And we're going to start with an A chord. Um, I'm not too concerned about the mm -hmm. form you play your A in. I, I watch people do it differently. Mostly what I care about right now is the understanding of the 12-bar progression. So if somebody said to you play a 12-bar blues, um, or this song is 12-bar rock and roll, um, basically what they mean is that there are 12 measures to the song to turn around in a, in a pattern. And the most usual pattern would be like this type of rock and roll pattern. And we would call this uh, 16 beats on the one chord. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. We're gonna have eight beats on the uh, four chord. Eight more on the A chord. On the five chord, four, four, one. On the four chord, four. On the one chord, one, two, three, four. So, and usually, most people don't play the last eight. They usually play four, and then they do what they call a one-five turnaround or or a turnaround, which would be coming down one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So, so basically, there's your 12-bar structure. So, um, and you guys will see that written in Roman numerals. It'll have four eyes, um, and then it'll have the the four chord, which is I B, and then I'll have you know two of those. And basically, what we're going to do is uh, I want to break this up so you guys see it. There are four beats in a measure in four four time. With four beats in a measure, we have 16 beats in A. We have four measures. And you have two measures in D, so we're six measures, and then two measures in A. And so you're at eight measures, and then you have one measure, nine in E, ten, one measure in D, and then you have two more measures in A, and that equals 12. That's why they call it a 12-bar blues, a bar and a measure is the same. So I'm going to show you a bass walk to this. Memorize the bass walk, too. I don't care if you're a guitar player. This will be, be an essential tool for you in the long run, okay? So, you, you know, you might as well learn it. And you could play this... Um, 0424 in an open position, but I'm going to play this in a closed position because it's movable. It's better to learn it in a closed position. Then if you change keys, you're just moving, you know, whatever steps one way or the other. But, but so here's a, here's a basic, I mean, bare bones, no thrills, 4-4, um, 12-bar bass walk. Number one beat, one beat, one quarter note. There's four beats of measure, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's two bars, three bars, four bars, five bars, six, seven, eight, one, nine, ten, eleven, right? That's two. <laughs> I threw you, didn't I? interesting if you look at this in the uh, open position um, the next one I'm just going to give you this I'm going to play this in eighth notes and I'll call them out for you so you can follow it still 12 bar blues in A same thing we're doing we're going to play it a little more different a, a little differently in there so we're going to do this we're going to hit these two strings and we're going to go open A and the second fret on the D string, which is knee, and we're going to make an A chord, or five chord. And we're going to also play this fourth note. Notice that's part of that bass line. We're going to do this in eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four.
right, I know you guys probably, if you're following this, that felt a little square and lame because most people don't actually play eighth notes and go one and two and three and they usually play a triplet there. And uh, so we're going to end up basically hitting this note one time, right? And it usually gets this kind of shuffly rock and roll groove to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Same, same notes, just watch that I'm only going to hit this note one time instead of hitting it twice. And we're going to have more of a triplet feel to it. I added a note. So I just slid from the one on the D. And then I moved it up to the five. You know, just just get. It really is easy. Ah, um, well, we're talking that bass walk thing. So here's our bass walk, right? Same notes, just a different spot. Okay, so we got the space walk. It's O4 on the A string, 2 4 on the D string. All right. I'm going to incorporate that into this. A um, couple ways you can do that. Um, um, but we can also go 1 and we go 3 4. Gives it, gives it a little bit of a, a little bit of a smoother shuffle. So I played that second fret on the D string. That's a that's an E9. I'm still taking the five, you know, it's a one, four, and five. That's all we're doing. By that I mean if you were looking at a major scale, A, B, C, you know, A, yeah, A, B, C sharp in this case. So if we go one, two, three, four, that's your D, right? Five, that's your E. Well, that's your chords. A, D, E, right? So, um, something a little interesting here. We're going to step it up into a more intermediate, advanced uh, mode. Um, and I'll call these... Guys, don't overcomplicate this. First of all, I want to say this shape is built off a chord. It's built off a pentatonic, which is built off a chord, a pentatonic scale. The third for this A major chord. This is a closed chord position. It's a bar chord. It's just the same as an E shape, in case you want to know. So take your index finger off and play an E like this. Move it up. E, F, G, A. Yeah, here we are in A. The reason I showed you that is because I want you to see this. Imagine this finger is barring those two notes, just like the chord. So these three notes are the chord. The reason that that's significant is I'm going to slide into this G from below. So, I mean, the third. That is on the G string. That's the sixth fret. That's the third for this chord, right? So we slide up from below, and then I hit the other rest of the chord. See this? these two on the five? Might even two, who knows? So, see what I did? Nothing to it. So I'm playing that chord. And we're gonna put the, the E and B on the seventh fret also, just really quick. Just some uh, St. Louis kind of rock and roll here. And I slide into this just for flavor sometimes, but you don't really have to. Right? That's a six, or I mean, that's the seventh fret on the G string. And then I'm going to hit the fifth fret, but I'm going to hammer onto the sixth on the G string. And then I'm going to play the seventh fret on the D string for the A note. Um, so the whole. This is like Chuck, Chuck Berry sounding kind of rock.
second two, instead of playing the whole four, we're just going to do two. And back to the whole four. Um, so we kind of uh, stop on the D here. So if we were playing A, B, C, D, right? This one, we're going to do something a little different. On the G string on a 12th fret, we're going to bend this up to actually the 14th fret. We're going to make that, that note here. Use your other fingers to back it up if you have to. Whatever you have to do. We're going to push that up a whole step. Right? And we're going to push it up a whole step, and we're going to make this a triplet. One la la. One la la, two la la, three la la, four la la. Back down to the A, which is, um, we're going to use the seventh fret, and do the same thing, and then be on the, uh, and that's a 12, 10, 10 on the B and E. Seven. We're going to bend it to the 8, and we're going to play 7-5-5 five, five on the B and E. So 7 is on the G string. Bend it all the way up a full step. Hear that note on the 9th fret? Make sure it's accurate. If it's not, it'll sound like crap. See what I mean? By the way, you can play them the other way around, and sometimes I'll play the triplet with space like a shuffle. I'll play it backwards. I'll play... You know, so from the uh, from the uh, D, so we should be at the five chord for four beats. I'm just gonna play an E nine. You can play any E; it doesn't matter where you are. And then we're gonna use that opening lick to finish it. spaces because time empty space is just as important as what you play what you don't play so we could say one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three yeah something like an old Elvis rock song you know rock and roll stuff One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Turn around right here. Just uh, just some, just some flavorful stuff. So we are uh, five and five and five on the B string and the E string, and we're gonna go eight on the uh, E string and seven on the B string. It's nice if you put some vibrato on that. And I just went back to the fives and open. an E, you know, any E. Nice 
nice turnaround, you know. So, um, some things that are very interesting about this. Uh, this isn't just rock and roll. I mean, this is country, too. If you said uh, some old Hank Williams stuff, you know, like, like uh, mind your own business or moving on over that style of country, it's all the same. Nice little lick here. This gives you more of a major feel for country stuff, so we're going to go... Still with that chord, with that A chord. So we got on the uh, 5, the B and E. This time on the G string, we're actually going to go on the 4th fret, but we're going to bend it to the 3rd for the 6th fret. We're going to bend it to the 6th fret for the 3rd of the uh, A chord. And I just uh, ended on this A as the root note, because I mean, if you bend it, you're here. You know, we came down Johnny Be Good, we ended on the A from that note. Same thing here. Hear it? So you can do all sorts of flavorful things like this. You can uh, bend that up and actually pinch the strings. So you play the E and the uh, G. But you could have a... turn around and get a hold of in a 12 bar progression progression a lot of slower blues stuff and any form of that will be fine So, so there's definitely some meat there. Um, one more time at this 12 bar thing. Um, you know, honestly, um, these, these using the chord shapes is great. And I'll use it a different way here. That's a great thing. Uh, a different shape for D using the chord shape. We're going to grab three notes here in D. On the four chord, I mean. So when we get up here, we're going to slide up the same way to the third. We're going to go on a G string to the 11th fret. We're going to go 11, 10 on a B string. This is very Eric Clapton-ish. And we're going to go 12, 11, 10 on the E string. We're going to bend this 13 note up. We're going to bend that 13 note up a whole step and end on a D, so we're going to make G's, they're both D, get it? So here we are, and I went back to it, a little vibrato here helps, that's why I used my middle finger so I can get it more, it doesn't really matter, but, so, from that third, from the uh, uh, 11 on the G string, Back to your A. So guys, have fun with this, man. This is a pretty deep lesson, and I hope that I gave you a lot of material to fill your heads up for the rest of your lives.